Hi folks, welcome to another edition of Ask a Pro. One of the questions I get all the time is, what's the hardest climb in the world? And this is a complicated question because normally when you're climbing, you're not racing against the climb as much as the guy next to you. There's a climb just a few blocks away that it's not hard. I could get up it, you could get up it. But if you're racing Matthew Vanderpool up it, well, now that's the hardest climb in the world. But from a pure climb perspective, there is an answer to that. In fact, I just lost my KOM there and I'm making plans to go back and see if I can retake it. So in the video, I'm gonna tell you what's the hardest climb in the world, what makes it so hard, and how I think I can go faster now than I did eight years ago. This episode is brought to you by Beam Dream. Do you struggle with sleep? Are you a traveler constantly adjusting to time zones? Maybe you have anxiety because you have KOMs all over the world, so there's literally people 24 hours a day around the globe trying to unseat you. Beam Dream is a tasty before bed drink. I like to mix it with milk. Dream has high quality sleep ingredients like melatonin, magnesium, L-theanine. This is the cinnamon cocoa flavor. I also like the sea salt caramel. That'll help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and you won't be groggy the next day. In a clinical study, 93% of participants reported a better night's sleep. I like to have this before bed. My WHOOP score will be happy. One of my goals this year was to reduce caffeine intake. So this helps me sleep a little bit better, wake up more energized, and not need that caffeine jolt throughout the day. You don't even need it. So to tell this story, I've got to take you back in time a little bit. It's 2016, I'm 30 years old, and I've just been shit out of the world tour. I announced my retirement, I wrote my really sad book, and I'm ready to start an office job at a sports agency in Los Angeles. When I announced my retirement, I took two months off the bike, got way out of shape, and then I got back on and started playing around on Strava for the first time. I had no ambitions for that weird shit to turn into a job. So around November, a mutual friend reached out and connected me to uh, Kevin Sistrom. He was the Instagram founder, uh, got into riding bikes, and we just kind of went for a ride around LA and got to know each other a bit. Turned out he was planning a trip to the big island of Hawaii for New Year's Eve, and so was my family. Kevin had set this goal to climb Mauna Kea, and he'd been training for it all year. I'd never heard of it, but when he told me about it, and I was gonna be there anyway, I thought, sure, I'll go up that with you, I'll, I'll go for that. And it turned out to be the coolest ride of my entire life. I've done all kinds of fucked up wild training rides. This is the one that I think of every day. So it was New Year's Eve 2016, technically my last day as a pro. I had no idea what I was doing with the rest of my life. It was a very emotional ride. So Kevin and I were guided that day uh, by a guy I used to race with, a total legend in North American cycling, Alex Candelario, who runs Big Island Bike Tours. Kevin and I started together, we chatted a little bit, and then we went our own pace. So I wasn't like, ripping it, pushing for the KOM. I definitely had my feet on the gas, but I was also doing Instagram live, taking photos and enjoying myself. From the beach, it's a beautiful day, and then you ride up this long highway and you get up to like eight or 9,000 feet. You're going through all these climate zones. Just that part took me like two, two and a half hours. Now, once you get up that first part of the climb, to your right is Mauna Loa, which is the highest paved climb in the world. You keep going a little bit, and to your left is Mauna Kea, which is just completely insane. You climb a ways, you're up to 11,000 feet. It turns to dirt for 10 kilometers. Now to be fair, Alex Candelario told me that I was gonna wanna do like a bike swap to a mountain bike or a gravel bike at that point. And I was kinda like, fuck off Kando, I'm world tour, I don't need that shit. I had 28 C tires and a 28 tooth cassette. So fast forward to me shouldering my bike for miles up this kinda loose, ashy sand. It's a volcano, what do you want? You get through that and now you're at like 13,000 something. And the last bit is paved, but it's insanely steep. I think at the time, only like 40 people had actually completed that ride on Strava. I got the KOM by two hours. It was a real nail biter. Then I went back down and found Kevin and encouraged him as he, he, he finished the damn thing. At the top, we had some high fives. We were both completely fucked. Uh, there was some pizza in the van. I finished this ride and my main thought was like, all the talk about cycling, all the cycling fans, all the people who are interested, it's all very clustered in like, you know, five countries on one continent. And there's just so much to share, so much cool shit to do that has nothing to do with bike racing. Mauna Kea totally opened my eyes to the potential of having a YouTube channel, of having sponsors, of having stories to share. So I didn't have a YouTube channel then, I didn't have a camera really at the time, but everything that you've seen on my channel has a little bit of Mauna Kea in it. And I always told myself I was gonna come back and my last video for Worst Retirement Ever, when I'm retiring from retirement, my last video would have to close the chapter and I would do an awesome video on Mauna Kea. I figured it's not going anywhere. Now when I said this would be my last episode, I did not think Worst Retirement Ever was gonna go on for eight years. But then over Christmas, I got the dreaded uh-oh email from Strava where my friend Larry Warbass had taken my KOM. Now I'm sure Larry was treating this ride about the same way I was in 2016. He had some Instagram video of it. He was enjoying himself. He was going on the exploration. Uh, but he took my KOM by 15 seconds. A five hour KOM he got by 15 seconds. 
looking back at my ride, I know a hundred places where I can get 15 seconds back from talking to Kevin at the start and not really starting at the beginning to all the photos and videos. I stopped and sat on the guardrail at an entry bar at one point. I stopped and took a shit at the visitor's center and my gear selections were atrocious. So I've decided not to wait I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go for this KOM, I'm gonna tell this story, I'm gonna share this place with you. I don't have the world tour fitness that I had then, but I also don't have like the two months of off season that I put together when I thought I was quitting. I'll definitely have my equipment right, we'll do a bike change, you've got the gravel bike getting ready here, I'm gonna put Invisiframe on my Austro gravel. We're making some tire decisions. Conditions up there can be completely insane. Another friend, Drake Duell, who's gotten a bunch of my KOMs around here, he was out there recently and was way up on the KOM pacing, but was turned around due to high winds a couple times. They didn't let him get up the final access road. You can get crazy storms at those altitudes. Anything can happen. So I'm headed out there next week. If you wanna know what happens in real time, uh, keep an eye on my Strava, I'll put my link down there. Mauna Kea deserves a really good video, so I'm not gonna rush it, but I'll get that up here as fast as I can. All right, wish me luck, mahalo.